Welcome back, everybody. Our next guest rocks, literally. I'm so excited. Ryan Dusick, you know him. Come on. I know you do. He's a founding drummer of the mega hit band. I don't even need to say it. Maroon 5. Like, you already knew that. And his new book, Harder to Breathe, a memoir of making Maroon 5, losing it all, and finding recovery is such an inspiration. Yeah as is Ryan himself. We are so thrilled to have you on Liftoff today, Ryan. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so Jeannie, Ryan and I are pals, um, and I recently hosted Ryan um, in Malibu at the Soho House Literary Salon event that I run there every month. And I have to tell you, um, Ryan's book, really is fantastic, harder to breathe. It's a great song, but it's an even better book. Um, and so I'm so happy to have you, Ryan, because you're a mental health coach, you're a speaker, you're an advocate, you're a columnist for Variety Magazine, and you very candidly share your own struggles with addiction in your book. Um, so I guess my question, my first question is, is what drove you to write the book now? Well, you know, I thought about writing this book probably about 10 years before I did, when I was really struggling, I was in a dark place because I had to leave the band that I spent a decade building with my best friends because I suffered a breakdown on the road that just uh, I didn't allow me to play the drums anymore. And so, you know, I, I wanted to write a book. I had a lot of stories to tell, but at that point, I didn't know what the purpose would be because I was still in this dark place. But fast forward a decade when I'm in recovery and I'm back in school uh, studying to get my master's degree in clinical psychology and turning all of this pain that I've been through into a mission, uh, you know, to help people and to give back, to, to be of service. And then it just kind of hit me. I had this, this tragic story I'd been telling myself had a happy ending. And so I, I wanted to share it and hopefully offer some hope to people that could see themselves in the things that I went through on my journey to where I'm at now. Well, you absolutely survive, not only survive, but you are thriving now. And for everybody that reads your book, what is the one main message or takeaway that you want people to finish the book and say, wow, this is what I learned? Well, I think that number one is that there's hope, even if you can't see it. Sometimes it's hard to see it. And the things that are major setbacks, disappointments, failures in our life are a part of the journey sometimes. We can't see that it's part of the journey until we get to the other side of it. And it doesn't have to be defining of you, right? For me, I thought the rest of my life was gonna be you know, this big letdown because the one thing that had been my purpose and my meaning and the thing that gave me a sense of fulfillment in my life was gone. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that going through all of that actually was the thing that offered me new purpose and new meaning and something that I was able to create uh, a new life for myself. And so that was the thing that became defining of this part of my life. So it's, it's, it's never the end. It's always part of the process. Wow. Now, if you could go back in time, so, you know, here you are, you're in Maroon 5, your band is breaking, you're the hottest band in the world, and you have this crisis where now you can't play drums. If you could go back in time to yourself at that moment in time, what would you tell yourself? Well, I think I would probably tell myself, first off, that it's okay. You know, most people go through the experience of having imposter syndrome at mm -hmm. some point, which is what I experienced, feeling like I don't belong here. Um, I'm going to be a failure. All the all the insecurities and self-doubt that goes into, you know, I, I've talked to people in what I do now that are at the highest levels of, of different industries, and they all talk about this feeling, right? So for me to be in that place, I deserve to be there, you know, to be on stage in front of 20,000 people. We worked for a decade to get there. I deserve to be there. I just, I couldn't understand that then because I had those insecurities. So I would definitely tell myself that. And also just being open to to change and being open to the feeling of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You know, as a young man, especially 20 years ago, when the public discourse on mental health wasn't what it is now, it's starting to become now, uh, you know, especially for young men, there was just not this ability to be open about our vulnerability and insecurity in a way that would have been helpful. So communicate those feelings, talk to the people around you about what you're experiencing, and hopefully you can get some support and the help that you need to work through those things. Ryan, I want to thank you for coming. I want to thank you for writing your book. Um, it's really important, and I'm so grateful that we that we got to hear your start, story, and more importantly, your audience got to hear your story. My pleasure. Thank you guys for having me on.
Thanks so much, Ryan. And don't go anywhere for everybody that's watching because we've got celebrity yeah. chef George Duran joining us after the break. And it smells so good. <laughs>